I have here samples of poplar, varnished and sanded, a piece of molding, a piece of baseboard, so we have enough samples to look at botanical key detail. First off, names. This wood species is known and sold as poplar, which is short for yellow poplar. However, yellow poplar, this species, it belongs to the Liriodendron genus. Liriodendron is just Latin, it means lily flowered. The actual real poplars have nothing to do with this wood species here. The actual poplars are either known as poplar, cottonwood or aspen, depending on where you live and how trees are named, but especially the cottonwood, you know, they have fluffy little uh, seeds that drift in the wind and then they clump together in the, uh, on, the, on the ground or on the road, at the edge of the road, or whatever, in your kitchen, on your mosquito mesh, whatever. Uh, that's cottonwood. That's, those are the real poplar trees uh, belonging to the populus genus. Again, this is Liriodendron, and they have nothing in common. This tree has flowers, and poplars have that cotton balls that are blown in the wind. Okay, completely different trees. So, nevertheless, throughout this video, I'm going to refer to this as poplar, or yellow poplar. So, the uh, these boards are actually rainbow poplar. Now, rainbow poplar is not a separate species. It just has some, uh, it's a color variation of poplar, this yellow poplar, liriodendron that we have here. Uh, this poplar is fairly easy to identify. The sapwood is sharply different from the heartwood and on the, uh, we just put down here, and uh, either varnished or just sanded, you can see the heartwood, sorry, the sapwood is creamy white and the heartwood has this brown color or cardboard brown color but there's also a bunch of green in it or olive green that you can especially see on this sanded sample here same on this trim it's got a it's got a sliver of sapwood in it here and the rest of it is heartwood so they have this greenish discoloration to it this is a ring porous tree meaning it's coming from the eastern united states basically it's got growth rings and uh, and where the growth rings come out to the face grain such as here you can see it they come out to the face grain the growth rings have this they are very thin and they have this chestnut brown color either here or on this one you can see it on the sapwood chocolate brown streaks or chestnut brown streaks. So those are the growth rings when they come out to the face grain. Same in the sapwood, but now they are embedded in this greenish brown uh, uh, heartwood. So why this one is a rainbow is, uh, is, you know, it doesn't have all the colors of the rainbow. What happens here and uh, and I'm going to explain why the similarity is. This is actually a book match. So why this is rainbow is because the boards have this... The board uh, color goes from very light to dark to extremely dark to basically black. And, the, and uh, depending on how the light hits the darker spots here, the figured grain here around the knot. And this is why I chose to varnish these sides here in book match. The, you get sometimes a purplish color on them or or black more so on the sanded side you can see when I move the board together that there's definitely purplish patches here 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 some purplish wash here purplish there same on the opposite side purplish here 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 okay now these this discoloration the, uh, this purple and black discoloration is caused by mineral deposits. The 
heartwood is darker because of heart darker than the sapwood because of the mineral deposits in it so that's uh, for any tree and why in this species the mineral deposits react with the light this way that nobody knows why but it's got this nice rainbow uh, color to it this species is native to the eastern United States like I said and is extremely cheap it is a utility wood species it's part of crates pallets and these boards came out of a furniture that I destroyed this was one board at one point like so because poplar is sensitive to light you can see this was less exposed to light this length was more exposed to light and this edge is even darker uh, just ignore my uh, patches of uh, varnish that uh, came down to the edge but it's even darker than the edge on this side okay sensitive to light tends to darken uh, yeah like I said this was part of a, a, a furniture uh, it's also in uh, plywood uh, they make uh, the veneers inside the core veneers inside the plywood out of poplar veneer and and the face veneers can be made of uh, more expensive wood species such as birch or maple okay so it's used for plywood as well it's a utility grade wood it's very light very easy to work with it is a softwood sorry it is a hardwood species that is the softest hardwood one of the softest hardwoods that there is maybe probably balsa is the softest but this is nearing it it's very very soft and uh, when it's sawn and, and and sanded the green let me just find a good spot for it the green often remains fuzzy let me see maybe not so fuzzy there that's more like a little bit of ga uh, green tear out but uh, it needs a lot of sanding or additional sanding there it is it's fuzzy everywhere slash tear out there so often it needs a lot of sanding or sanding with finer grits to make it really nice and acceptable uh, other than the colors and uh, and how the green works there that's really basically the major identification uh, key to it on end grain that I have prepared here with uh, sending it to a thousand grit the vessel elements or pores you can see are extremely small I'm gonna put it under a microscope to show you how small they are on the 10 power 60 power and 200 power and those vessel elements are microscopic and the rays which run in this direction on this specimen here they are thinner than spider's web okay they are they are there they are visible they are creamy white but they are extremely fine okay so those are rays and the rays on the face grain are practically invisible okay or uh, you can see some of the ray flex on in, in this uh, cove part and this cove part here but they are really hard to see there you can see some of these ray flex along the length there but it's uh, there you can see some of the rays there I'm gonna just slide the piece because depending on how the light hits it there in, inside the uh, this trough here the bottom of the cove and the same for this part here you can see some of these ray flex depending on how the light hits it so they're really really hard to see I'm gonna put it under the microscope now and uh, I'm not gonna have any more words with that just maybe uh, some captions on the screen so that's basically all the features that identify yellow poplar